Hello and welcome to another episode of the Grey Havens podcast. My name is Dave Radford, singer and songwriter of the Grey Havens, and once again, I will be your host as I dig into the writing and recording process of our original songs. And it's been a minute since I've done any of these. The last song breakdown episode was at least a couple of years ago with the release of our last album of original original songs called Blue Flower, which was an album heavily inspired by C.S. Lewis's autobiography, Surprised by Joy. You can go check that out on Spotify or wherever you listen to music. And a lot of that album was me trying to lyrically and musically interpret and express a lot of the imagery from Lewis's work, Uh, specifically his autobiography, Surprised by Joy, and the Narnia series, through the filter of my own lived experiences as well. And in some ways it felt like, in a lot of ways it felt like a vicarious experience, writing, recording, and touring those songs. And I said at the beginning of that series of episodes that I chose that specific theme for an album mostly because it was the only thing I was inspired to write at the time and that otherwise you would have gotten an album about how tired I was. I was just fairly burned out at the time. And so the idea of the Blue Flower album came at the perfect moment to give me that spark of inspiration that I needed to get writing more music. And it was the most conceptual album I've written, followed closely by our album She Waits, which was a heaven-themed album where I was doing a bit of, a fair bit of reading and even nerding out by auditing some online seminary courses about heaven to prepare for the writing process. And for this new album, though, I'm, um, which I'm around 99% certain of the album name, but just in case... I end up changing my mind. I'll wait to announce it properly later on. Uh, But for this new album, the process felt entirely different from writing and recording previous albums. It's the most personal collection of songs I've written and really encapsulates what I've experienced emotionally and spiritually over the last two years of my life specifically. And because... Uh, before we dig into the songs, I've, I'll just say I've been a bit nervous to actually begin recording these episodes. Uh, but now that we're done with the bulk of re- the recording about a week or two ago, I'm determined to at least give this a shot and see how it goes. But before we dig into any of the song writing and recording process, I would be remiss if I didn't mention that we are going on tour. It's called the Anywhere Tour this fall. Uh, We're going to be playing mostly in October, about 19 shows in many cities that we don't get to play in that often. So I will leave a link in the description. Make sure and check to see if we are coming to one of your cities uh, where you live. And these songs are going to be an intimate night of stories and songs, uh, previewing a lot, actually, in fact, of these songs that are going to be on the new album. We'll probably switch it up from night to night and test out for the first time some of these songs live. And we're really excited about this tour. So if you're near any one of the cities, we'd love to see you at one of the shows. Come say hi, and we'd love to see you there. Okay, with that, here we go. Let's dig into the writing and recording process of our song, Anywhere. First, I want to play the song all the way through so that you can have it in your mind as we navigate through the story of how it got made. Eyes wide, late night, windows still open. There's a shadow in my back saying everything's broken. So I pointed to a star saying that's where I'm going Second to the right, then straight to the morning Praying in the dark, please, if you got a moment There's a shadow in my mind says you're never gonna know 
That I've been dying inside I've been trying not to show it But I never want to feel this way again So take me anywhere, anywhere, anywhere But here I'll take me anywhere, anywhere, anywhere But here I don't care, I don't care, I don't care where Just take me anywhere Anywhere But here I've been trying to keep the faith I've been trying to trust the process but it just feels like pain, doesn't feel like progress And it seems like a waste if I'm really being honest I've been trying to fly away, but I keep falling And Neverland keeps calling So take me anywhere, anywhere, anywhere Take me anywhere, anywhere, anywhere But here and I don't care, I don't care, I don't care where Just take me anywhere I could spend my nights staring at the sky Dream of ways to fly away Chasing happy thoughts for a better plot While I lose another day And what a tragedy to awake and see that I never learned to stay. So bring me to a place where I don't chase escape, somewhere I could find me safe. For each of these episodes, before I hit record, I typically like to go back in time via my voice memos app on my phone and find the ones where I'm beginning to get a handle on the identity of any given song. And I've said this before, but I typically start with the music bit for each song that I write, mostly because music comes much more naturally to me than writing lyrics, and it gets rid of the blank canvas anxiety when it comes to lyrics because with music you're you're not walking up to a blank canvas anymore it already has colors and maybe even blurred shapes and Im images that give you an idea of where things could or should go so this is one of the earliest voice memos of me trying to find the verse melody for the song that became anywhere Again. 
So you can probably tell that feels a lot different than where things ended up. I'm singing about hatching escape plans to an alternate reality. It's a little bit more uh, up-tempo, frantic feeling in the piano. And I think after toying with it for a while, I ended up with still gibberish, but something more like this. This direction felt just a little bit more right for the expression or emotion that I was trying to convey, which was just feeling stuck in suffering. And in this specific instance, um, chronic pain was the catalyst for the lyrics. And if you've been to any one of our live shows over the last couple of years, you probably know that you know the song came to mean more to me than that. But that's where I was when I was writing this song was specifically was just experienced a lot of setbacks when it came to health and how I was just feeling physically. And the phrase, just take me anywhere, but here kept coming to mind. I remember I was every day for a period of time driving down my street and to get to the highway, I have to pass this gas station, which at the time was a Mapco gas station, and they were building a new one, and there was going to be this grand opening, and I don't know, uh, for a whole host of reasons, the idea of just working at that gas station as sort of like an escape route really appealed to me. I just remember thinking, man, if I could just work at that gas station, then things would be so much better, which is probably not, it's probably an indicator that you're not in a great, great place. So anywhere but here just became this idea for the lyric. And eventually I stumbled on the melody and progression for that. You'll notice that I started writing on the piano, but eventually ended up switching over to the guitar. I think mainly because it felt more lonely and sad and embodying the emotion. In 2022, I remember we were playing shows and and previewing this song, and I was playing it on piano, and I don't know at what point the switch happened but one night I just decided, you know, I think I I think I'd rather play this on the guitar and I'm not sure that I ever look back. Eyes wide late night, window still open. There's a shadow in my back saying everything's broken. I'd heard from other artist friends up until this point about what to me sounded like mythical co-writing sessions where, you know, they would gush about how everything just kind of flew onto the page and we were in such a flow and, you know, the ideas just kept coming and, you know, like stuff to me that just did not compute. I had never experienced anything like that up until this point and just thought, man, maybe I just, I'm going about this the wrong way when it comes to co-writing, but it happened this time around. Uh, this is the first and maybe only time where I experienced what I think is a version of what my artist friends have, have told me about. I walked in the room and it just felt like there was this lightning in the bottle a couple of hours. And I will be forever grateful to the two writers that were with me on that day. Benji Cowart, he's helped me finish a few songs in the past. Storehouse, See You Again, and She Waits, incredible writer. And Callie Heiligenthal, her artist's name is Callie, and was such a wonderful 
voice and asset to this song as well. I remember we fairly quickly refined the chorus and wrote the second verse. And the goal was to try and write the bridge in in such a way that could make the final chorus say, don't take me anywhere but here, instead of just take me anywhere but here. I wanted to lead the song into a final chorus that felt hopeful instead of just, you know, sitting in the in the escapism wish or the kind of despair. And I remember Callie coming up with this great bridge melody idea to help get us started in the right direction. <laughs> It sounds like such a simple little moment, but that would that to date is one of my favorite moments ever in songwriting. Uh, just just because the three of us then it was such a synergistic collaborative thing to finish the song with this bridge. Like we were all just equally building off of each other's ideas, and I just remember feeling this spark of like wow this is really cool (laughs) i wish more more moments like this could happen in my future but we yeah finished the bridge and then that was the song we will probably dig into more breaking down lyrics when we talk about the production of the song but can't overstate how special that songwriting session was for me and just my gratitude and thanks to Benji and Callie for helping me helping me finish it. So at this point, let's move on to the actual recording of the song. I could spend my nights staring at the sky Dream of ways to fly away. At this point, I need to introduce the main creative collaborator on this album, Joey Lichty. If you've followed us on Instagram for any amount of time, you've probably seen some ridiculous stories that I've posted of Joey in the studio, but he's much more than goofy and silly. He is an incredible producer, creative mind, singer-songwriter in his own right, but and electric guitar player. That was actually how I first got to know Joey. A friend of mine, actually our manager, recommended him because he'd seen him play at a live concert. And that was enough for me to, you know, just on that recommendation to say, okay, yeah, I'd love for him to be our electric guitarist on tour. That's often all you need is, is just the word of somebody that you trust to be able to say, okay, they're, they're good enough musically to come on tour. But the reason I wanted to meet Joey or that I would want to meet or speak with first with anybody that we tour with is mostly to gauge whether or not they're a good hang. Like, honestly, that is maybe even more important. I would take the not as great guitar player who is more pleasant and enjoyable to be around than the most amazing guitar player in the world who is not enjoyable to be around just because we're going to be spending so much time together in close quarters on tour, whether it's in a van or bus or however we're traveling in the day of the show and and all of that. And so it's so important to me to get people on the road that are enjoyable to be around, especially at this point in my career. And so I went over to Joey's house and met him and could tell right away this, this guy was going to be great. He's 20, he was 23. I don't know how he, how old he is at the time, maybe 25, but just really hungry to play music and produce music. And I just asked, I didn't know he was a producer. So I just asked, Hey, while I'm here, can I hear anything that you've produced? And he played me a song or two. And I just remember thinking, wow, like I would actually maybe like to work with this person on a project. I don't know what it would be. But it actually happened that 
we worked with Joey to produce the whole Hymns album. And that Hymns album is is its own story. It was sort of an unplanned venture, but Joey was the person that we ended up wanting to record that album with. And I thought originally that that album was just going to be very, very vocal acoustic guitar only. And so I had low expectations for what it could be going into the studio. And Joey just proved time and time again how creative he was and all of his ideas. And I just, so the, the hymns album ended up being much more fleshed out than I, I thought it was going to be going into it. And halfway through the hymns album, I thought maybe this could be the guy for our next album. And that's exactly what happened. So Joey is an incredible engineer. He is great at capturing the heart and soul of any instrument. He's an, uh, a ninja at miking techniques and nerds out about all that stuff and mic preamps and getting the sound. And so I'm going to tell the story real quick. This episode is probably going to be slightly longer than other episodes in this podcast series, just because it's the first one. I'm, I'm still getting my legs under me, but I'm going to tell the story real quick about how Joey and I went into this used music store, Fanny's Music in Nashville, Tennessee. We were looking for an album, not an album. We were looking for uh, a guitar for this album felt like a very guitar centric album this time around, as opposed to piano in the past, the last album blue fire was almost entirely piano. And this one's almost entirely or mostly guitar. And we went to this used music store and I was there maybe a half hour before Joey playing around with guitars. And I forget if I had picked up this particular guitar, but if I did shame on me, because Joey got there We were looking around. We didn't really hear or see play anything that we thought was magic. And all of a sudden, from across the room, there's this group of three guys that had just walked in, and they pick up this old archtop guitar and play it. And both me and Joey, like, whip our heads over to that direction. And I just thought, like, what is that? And it was this about a hundred year old, what's called a Santa Sia or Santa Chila, S-A-N-T-A-C-I-L-L-A. That's the name of the type of guitar. I think it's 1931 is when the guitar was made. And it just had this character to it that was so magical. And the guys that were playing it were also noticing (laughs) how magical it was and gushing over the guitar. And it was only $400. And I could not believe that Joey and I had missed this guitar. And I thought for sure that these guys were going to buy the guitar. I mean, they had even talked the... So the guitar was like $550. They They had talked the owner down to $400. I thought that's it. We're it's over. I Joey, let's leave because I can't bear to watch them buy the most magical guitar I've I've heard in the guitar store right in front of us. So we left and went to another music store. Didn't find anything half as good. Kind of dejected feeling, and then drove back over to to Fanny's to continue our search. You know, hoping that the guys would have left by then, and we went walked back into the store. And into the main guitar room, and there it was, back on the wall uh, of guitars. I could not believe it. So you better believe I was super fast to go over, grab the guitar, didn't even need to play it before saying, I'll take it. And that was the most important, I think, instrument or studio gear purchase, whatever you want to call it, that I've ever made. It was just such 
a game changer for how the album ended up sounding. The guitar, that guitar is on most of the songs and it just felt so right uh, when we took it back to the studio and, and put microphones on it. So what I didn't mention in, about that story <laughs> was how I was so mad at Joey because when the guys were first playing the guitar in the other room, Joey's just, just couldn't help himself. Like they were, they were playing the guitar and, and Joey a couple times, not once, but like twice commented out loud, like that guitar is so sick. You know, like that is such an epic guitar. Whatever he was saying in my head, I was like, Joey, <laughs> can't believe, like, what are you trying to do here? Sabotaging. So luckily, even Joey's endorsements uh, did not make them, in the end, get the guitar. I have no idea why they did not buy that guitar, but I'm so thankful that they didn't. And wanted to make sure I got that story in there somehow because it was so important for the for the rest of the album. Okay, so moving on to the actual production recording process, the goal was to try and keep this song sparse when appropriate. We didn't, in other words, we didn't want to overproduce the song. We didn't want to add too many things, too many layers. Sometimes less is a lot more. And it's a lesson that I've had to learn time and time again in production. I'm not sure that I've always gotten it exactly right, but sometimes what's called for is restraint. And so that's what we tried to do. We, we, we wanted to capture the feeling of the lyric. And sometimes it's helpful. I learned this trick from uh, producer Ben Shive, who produced Blue Flower and She Waits and Ghost of a King. On Blue Flower, he asked me, what is a, an image that comes to mind when you think about this song? Like, what? Describe it to me. And I think that's such a helpful question to consider when you are both writing and producing a song, like paint the picture in your mind. And for this one, the image was someone sitting at their windowsill, looking out on a cold, starry night, sort of dreaming of escape. And you'll notice in the lyrics that there's a few allusions to Neverland. It's not very hard to miss. In the first verse, the lyrics are eyes wide, late night, window so open. There's a shadow at my back saying everything's broken. So I pointed to a star saying that's where I'm going. Second to the right, then straight till morning. And in the second verse, before the chorus hits... I sing the line in Neverland is calling. So we have this clear connection point to Neverland. And we almost called the song Neverland when we played it live before recording the song. We'd pull the audience on what they would vote for for a title. I think the options were anywhere, anywhere but here and Neverland. And most people voted for Neverland, though in the end it, it just didn't feel right. And it felt like it would compete too much in people's minds with the book or movie. But there's certainly a lot of Peter Pan Neverland imagery in here. And so we wanted to create that feeling as well when we were thinking about production. So here is the atmosphere track sort of a few things combined together. Joey filled a few wine glasses with water until he got it to the right pitch. Uh, and you, you know, uh, run your finger over the rim of the glass. It's a uh, hard to do actually. And he played a few of those notes. There's some piano things happening in reverse. There's some high synth things, some background vocals. And 
I think just a few things worked really well to create this picture. The other two main elements in the song from a production side of things were the drums. We had the good fortune to work with Aaron Sterling. He's one of the most sought after studio drummers in the world. And he had such a great first instinct on what this song needed. We weren't sure about it at first because it wasn't as sparse maybe as we thought it was going to be but it added the right amount of energy while still keeping things soft i should mention too that this was not at all like a lightning in the bottle recording process the way that the song was written we went through the production and recording on the song very painstakingly i think it almost has the record for the most amount of time that we have spent on any given song recording i think it was over 20 full days in the studio trying to figure it out and we took the song a lot of different directions and one of the pieces of the puzzle i think that we needed at the end of the recording process was strings and we we didn't have a string arrangement that we liked and i remember we had already booked the string players for a certain date and time that was fast approaching and we didn't have an arrangement and The people that we wanted to have arrange it just didn't have the time on their schedule in order to make it come together before the recording session. So I remember sitting down, uh, and actually where I am right now, in trying to write my first ever string arrangement. And even though it's fairly simple, it felt right, and I was trying to capture somewhat of the ethos of like a Damien Rice sort of vibe in the arrangement that I wrote. So here's what those strings sounded like. Ended up loving how everything turned out, but they gave the song like the needed hopeful lift in the second chorus and final chorus especially. recorded those strings and the strings for loop cycle on the same night and that was such a fun experience i'd never had anything that i had arranged like that be recorded and it was it was sort of like a a bucket list thing or a, a dream um and i was so happy with how it all turned out so that is pretty much everything you know i didn't highlight every single little detail i suppose but that is most of the elements for the production and a lot of the story for how the song was written i hope that this was an enjoyable listen and i'm looking forward to doing many more of these for future songs on this album so Thanks for sticking around if you made it this far. And until next time, thanks for listening. We're going to close it out with a full listen through one more time of our song, Anywhere. Come see us on tour this fall if you're in any one of the cities that we are visiting. And hope to see you there. Bye for now. I 
eyes wide Late night windows are open There's a shadow in my back Saying everything's broken So I pointed to a star Saying that's where I'm going Second to the right Then straight to the morning Praying in the dark Please if you got a moment There's a shadow in my mind Says you're never gonna notice That I've been dying inside I've been trying not to show it But I never wanna feel this way again So take me anywhere, anywhere, anywhere But here I'll take me anywhere, anywhere, anywhere But here, I don't care, I don't care, I don't care where. Just take me anywhere, anywhere. But here, I've been trying to keep the faith. I've been trying to trust the process, but it just feels like pain. Doesn't feel like progress, and it seems like a waste. If I'm really being honest, I've been trying to fly away, but I keep falling, and never land keeps calling. So take me anywhere, anywhere, anywhere but here Or take me anywhere, anywhere, anywhere but here And I don't care, I don't care, I don't care where Just take me anywhere I could spend my nights staring at the sky Dream of ways to fly away Chasing happy thoughts or a better plot While I lose another day And what a tragedy To awake and see that I never learned to stay. So bring me to a place where I don't chase escape, somewhere I could find me safe. Take me anywhere, anywhere, anywhere But here Don't take me anywhere, anywhere, anywhere But here Don't take me anywhere Wide late night windowsill